So I decided to uh, buy another car to tide me over until the Land Cruiser is ready. Heading over to Big Dave's to show him the car what I have just bought. He's probably gonna hate it. Uh, let's see if we can get his reaction. <laughs> I've just told them that you're going to hate it. Well, so, I mean, I already hate them. But... So, what you're in, David, is a 2004 V8 uh, Range Rover, which might do 13 miles to the gallon. That's the economic. This one is the... Only if it runs. The first engine he made, which is the BMW V8. All right. That's off not... of drift cars. Oh, well, it's not the engine that failed. And then it's this one has the tragic gearbox, it's the five-speed GM box, uh, which failed so much that they then stopped making them. <laughs> and this has the early generation of electrics. Oh, good. Uh, this. There's, a, there's a bizarre anti-gravity puddle has formed on the, on the bonnet. <laughs> like, <laughs> the wind keeps blowing it back up and the corners keep sloshing it. We're going to go around a corner now and it sloshes up the side, <laughs> but it can't escape. The brakes work, the engine works. It works, engine works. We're yes. currently doing 14 miles to the gallon. I feel like a better now. Um, what do you think will break first? Uh, probably something electrical. Given that at the moment there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. Like everything works, the electric seats, the movers. Yeah. Well, apart from the, the television, because you need to get like a like an analog Wait. connector thing. I don't the analog analog television doesn't exist anymore. Correct. So it will So the TV so it, won't, it, it, needs, won't work. it needs like a new thing in the boot. And then, oh, and then, right. and then it will receive like, digital signals again. Uh, or you could just no. Or you could just not have a television. It a I think I'm just going to get the same little Bluetoothy yeah. gadget that yeah. you got before. Um, Which is yeah. It has a Wabasto in here somewhere because it's got um, controls for yeah. preheating the cabin and stuff. Oh, it'll be out there something. What any of that is standard. Something rather right height. Oh, standard. Yes, we're on standard right height. Is there like a motorway right height? Twist that down. That was the one thing I, I didn't test drive it, but I did make sure that the air suspension would go through a full cycle, um, and I made sure that the gearbox worked in reverse. It is savage in reverse, oh. as you'll find out. For some reason, you put it in reverse, and you the barest tickle on the throttle, and it right. tries to send you through the windscreen. <laughs> I don't understand. But it's got Isofix harnesses in the back, which the the Land Cruiser doesn't have. Ready for another, another powerful overtake? Right, I'm ready. Ready. This poor cyclist. Remember, I gave him his one and a half meters. This is great. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put a K and N on it, Dave. <laughs> sounds fantastic. <laughs> Even from out here with the sound in. And the brakes? Yeah. Give us the brakes. <laughs> oh, oh, things falling. Wow. Yeah, they're fine. I'll be happy. It didn't pull to. Any weird directions? I think the steering wheel isn't, it's isn't off quite slightly. straight. It's off um, slightly. This has 389 grams of CO2 per mile. It is like the worst thing oh. I have ever owned or driven. This has got a Harman Hardon. Ah, uh, Harman Hardon. Sound yes. system. Harman Does it work? I'm guessing that music button would be. Music? No. Source. Source memory? No. There's a music button. Radio. By the way, 20 year old. Touch screen. Like yeah. literal touch screen. Yeah. Like that's bizarre, I did not expect that. Then again, how long ago was it? 20 years? 2004 this is. Yeah, so. We're just old. We're just old. <laughs> yeah. It's not, oh, well, it's not 2000 and, Yeah, two, 18 years for this particular model. That's what I mean, so it's only. I have discovered one fault with it so far. Yes. Like sitting in my head, the back here, my head is touching the ceiling and I thought that's a bit weird. Range Rovers are supposed to have headroom. But the problem is, the headliner is no longer attached. It's like, I expected it to be full of water. So yeah, that's that's one thing. It'll need glue on there. Some of the seat design is a little weird because I feel like it should have a pop out here somewhere and it doesn't. But I've got a free book of Toy Story 4. Uh, some saliva included. It was published in 2020. So a child has been in there in the last two years. Oh, wait, did you see the car phone? Need your gas struts for your thing. Uh, I know, but it's got actual gas struts, like at yeah, the bottom, yeah. like little sprees. Uh, I think it needs new gas str struts everywhere. Yeah, okay. But check that out. That 
is an actual yeah. curly cable car yeah. phone thing, and you can buy them on the internet. Transfer good box. That could be like Wolf of Wall Street. Bomb heater in the back is working as well, that's confirmed. So this is the Vogue, which is the second from the bottom of the range one, because they only oh. made the HSE, and then the Vogue, and then they made, later on, they made Vogue SE and Autobiography. Right. So at the time that this was sold, this was top of the range. Yeah. Uh, and it had, you know, a lot of this stuff is just standard. I don't know which ones are options, but like heated steering wheel, it's got a notepad. Like I think this, right. you think that's like oh, voice control, okay. stop, you no. press this button and it, and it does nothing. You take voice notes. But you take voice notes, you literally can, oh it says phone on your dashboard now, I don't know what that is. But, full service history, 105,000 miles, it's just done a round trip to sky without failing okay. and there's nothing wrong with it apart from a wing mirror and the door trim's falling off. Maybe this is one of the things. So the problem with Land Rover and Range Rover is there's no consistency. Yes. So you'll either end up with a brilliant one that will never stop, uh -huh. or you get the fucked one that breaks every thousand miles. Everything single, every single thing breaks yeah. on it. And there's nothing in between. But the thing is, every, everything that I've bought has had. I was thinking about this in the share this morning. So people think that the RS6 is broadly reliable. Was, it wasn't yeah, for me. It wasn't for you. Yeah. Um, the Land Cruiser, nice. known for its reliability. Yeah. And mine needs six, seven thousand pounds spent on it. Uh, like it seems like everything has its problems. The the thing is, people are people on the internet talk, and a lot of people have a lot of opinions, and they think, oh, this car's crap, this this car's yeah. crap, that car's crap. But who is buying these things? So everyone is getting so so from like ten minutes driving around in this. This is way better than I had been expecting from the noise on the internet. Yeah. Oh, that's there you go. It's the same as we do. It's back up ten thousand miles, and it's had umpteen things wrong with it. Yeah. Good old Rangers. Ford Rangers? Yeah. But I tell you, that's emission systems that, that fail. This definitely has no emission no. systems, no start, stop, no, nothing. It is just a, a, an unquenchable thirst. Mm. And it'll probably eat through brake pads as well. So, um, this has 900 litres of space in the back versus the Land Cruiser's 1300. And the Q7 had. 700 ish litres, so it's bigger than any of them. It doesn't have seven seats, which means there's more space for it's storage. It's a good shape, it's nice, it's square. It's a big cube. Which is what you want, a big cube. For my purposes, yeah. I want a big cube. Yeah. Let me see what our, our. Remember what the button was? I think it was that one. 15 mpg, look at that. Apparently, we're going to get 369 out of it. Would you like to. How much money it cost me to fill this tank? Uh, no, well, let's see what's. Let me just pick a. Is it a an 80 litre tank? It is 105 litres. 105 litres, okay, so that's like 250 pounds to fill it. <laughs> it cost me 178 quid. <laughs> I took it to the car, <laughs> to the petrol station. My dad drove it there, so he was the, he was the first person right. to properly test drive it after I'd already bought it. So we took it to the petrol station, I put 178 pounds into it. But yeah, I think this will do it for a backup car. Yeah. I think this will do just nicely. And I hope, I really, I really hope, David, I really hope I don't like it. Because then I would be tempted to spend a bit more to get a slightly newer one, and uh, then I might get uh, in a world uh, of pain. But they, so you need to stop me from doing yeah. that. You keep this one as not having any problems before you buy the next one. Yes, which will have all the problems. It will have all the problems of the world. So I think it needs, as you can tell, it needs a good clean and a good polish. Yeah. Because um, some of the surfaces are really grubby, but remarkable, really, for twenty uh, or well, eighteen years, and it looks good. So. Can I be forgiven, given how much I paid for it? Oh yes, them? absolutely, yeah. It's, so if I, I think I would, if I went to sold the, sell this clean, I would double my money. I, I was going to say, if you brought, told me that you'd spend five grand on this, yeah, but... Yeah. <laughs> you were like, out, you can <laughs> take it back. You, you work on that yourself. Well, the thing is, I, I'm hoping it doesn't need worked on. Yeah. Does it, I think there's a, there's a bit of an oil leak underneath the engine, don't know what that is. But other than that, everything seems to be tipped up. Anyway, I'll take some video from the outside and then sign off. But. You don't hate me for buying it? No, oh, not yet. Not, not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> the next morning. Now, why would I have a wee puddle in front of this car? It wasn't there earlier.